Welcome to the new unit. This is Firearms Tool Marks and Impressions. This video will concentrate solely on the firearms aspect of this unit. Firearms and related evidence, tool marks, and other impressions which include shoe marks and tire tracks lend themselves to individualization. They all contain structural variations and irregularities such as scratches, nicks, breaks, and wear that can be used and easily individualized to a specific gun tool, shoe, or tire. Next we're going to discuss rifling. That's when a barrel is bored out making grooves and lands in it. And here you can see an example of it. Next slide we will discuss it further. Rifle and pistol barrels are what are called rifled. Rifling is where the gun barrels have spiral grooves impressed on the inside. These grooves make the bullet spin and thus make it travel in a straighter path. The raised areas in the bore are called the lands. When the bullet travels through the barrel, these lands and grooves leave impressions on the bullet slugs, which are also called lands and grooves. No two barrels are the same due to the manufacturing process. The barrel size is measured in caliber. Caliber is either measured in hundreds of an inch or in millimeters. Some examples are shown here on the right. Other examples are a 45, 40, 38, 32, or 22, or a 9 millimeter. Here you see high-powered rifle, rifle shells, and those are a .46 or a 50 caliber, which is a .5 Vickers there. As we stated earlier, as the bullet travels through the barrel, it spins and it gets impressed on by the lands and grooves. Here you can see an example of this impression. The lands are the raised area, the grooves are obviously the grooved area, but there are also striations caused by the manufacturing process and this is what helps individualize the bullet to a specific gun. Shotguns are different. Their barrels are not normally rifled, although some can be. They have smooth barrels and their diameter is measured in gauge. Gauge was originally the number of lead balls that would make a pound. So a 12 gauge would be a ball made out of 12th of a pound of lead. The exception is the 410 shot shotgun, which its barrel is a .41 inch. Here you can see the different size of shotgun shells. If you look to the far right, there's a 4 gauge. That means that lead ball is 4 ounces, or 1 quarter of a pound. So that is a fairly large barrel gun when you can make a ball out of a quarter pound of lead. Cartridge cases can also be used to identify guns. Cartridge case is a part of the bullet that holds the gunpowder, primer, wadding, shot, slug, etc. Marks are left on the cartridge by the breech block, firing pin, ejector, and extractor. Each of these parts of the gun will leave a mark because of the force of the shot and the metal-on-metal -metal contact. There are two gun databases run by the federal government. The first is called Drug Fire, run by the FBI. And the other is IBIS, run by the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Distance can be determined by using the amount of gunshot residue on the victim's clothing or the item that was hit. The larger and darker the ring of gunpowder around the hole, the closer the gun was to the target. For shotguns, the spread of the shotgun wound also determines the distance from the target. Sometimes, if the gun is choked down, it will make a smaller pattern. Primer residue, also known as gunshot residue, is also a good way to determine who fired the gun and what gun it came from because the primer residue can be traced back to the gunpowder. Its chemical makeup, its size and shape of its particles all help you trace back to the gun that fired it. Sometimes criminals, in an effort to conceal other crimes, will file off the serial number from the gun, as shown in the picture here, and in the next slide we'll talk about how that can be restored. Serial numbers are stamped into the metal. Under the metal it creates permanent stain, this strain. This strain can be raised by chemical means, usually by an acidic solution of 
hydrochloric acid, copper chloride, and water. This works well on the steel of the gun. Finally, we need to talk about the collection and preservation of firearm evidence. First and foremost, the firearm needs to be made safe. If you need to fingerprint it, carry the weapon by the trigger guard. Before the unloading the gun, make sure to record the hammer and safety positions and indicate the position of the chamber, position of the cylinders on revolvers. Live rounds should be placed in separate boxes. The firearm should be boxed for analysis. A few final notes about collection of evidence. If you find a weapon underwater, carry the weapon back to the lab in a container that can hold enough of the same water to cover the gun. Ammunition should all be collected carefully. Spent rounds should never be picked up with metal forceps. Spent bullets should be labeled on their nose or their base. Gunpowder deposits on clothing need to be carefully preserved and all clothing be packaged separately in paper.